Hey everybody. Today we're talking about matrix inverses. A square matrix is said to be non-singular or invertible if there's another matrix so that if you multiply them in any order, you get the um, identity matrix back. If the original matrix is uh, called A, the inverse is going to be written A with that sort of exponent negative 1 on it. Typical inverse function notation. Of course, this does not mean just 1 over A, so it's not actually an exponent. Here's an example. The matrices A and A inverse here are actually inverses. If we multiply them in either order, we get the 2 by 2 identity matrix back, 1, 0, 0, 1. A matrix that does not have an inverse is said to be singular or non-invertible. Most square matrices that you'll run into um, will happen to be non-singular, but there are lots of singular matrices. Here's a very simple one, 0, 1, 0, 0. This matrix does not have an inverse. And we can see that just by um, multiplying it by an arbitrary, let's say, 2 by 2 matrix, B sub i, j. If we compute that product, for example, A times B, using our usual matrix multiplication, we get B21, B22, 0, 0. Now, if there were an inverse B, we should be able to get the identity matrix here. But that's impossible. The lower right-hand entry is going to be 0, regardless of the values we pick for the Bij's. So this matrix A is going to be singular. Here's a handy property. If you have two invertible matrices, their product is going to be invertible as well. And there's actually a simple formula for the inverse of that product. AB inverse is B inverse A inverse. The proof is super short and super clear, so let's just run through it. In order to show that these two things are actually inverses, all I have to do is multiply them. Technically, I should do the multiplication in both orders. I'm just going to do AB times B inverse A inverse. Using the associative property, I can change around the parentheses. And then B, B inverse is the identity matrix. And then I'm left with AA inverse, which is just the identity matrix. This shows that AB and B inverse A inverse are, in fact, inverses of each other. When you're dealing with 2 by 2 matrices, there's a very simple formula for the matrix inverse. Um, if the matrix is A, B, C, D, then the inverse is going to be 1 over A, D minus B, C times D, negative B, negative C, A. So those main diagonal entries A and D have flipped, and the off diagonal entries B and C have had their sign changed. Then we've also divided by, one, um, we've divided by A, D minus B, C. Looking at this formula, we can immediately see when a matrix A is going to have an inverse, when it's a 2 by 2 matrix. There's going to be an inverse as long as AD minus BC is not 0. The matrix is going to be singular if AD minus BC is 0. We can verify that this formula works just by looking at AA inverse and A inverse A and checking that we get the identity matrix back. Let's just do A inverse A. Here's the computation we need to do. Multiplying rows and columns, doing dot products there, we get another 2 by 2 matrix. Simplifying it, we just get the identity matrix. Notice that the upper right and lower left hand corners of that second line from the bottom are going to simplify to 0, and the upper left and lower right entries are going to be the same as the denominator AD minus BC. So everything cancels to give me 1 on that diagonal. Here's a fact um, that becomes hugely important later on. You have to know what determinants are for it to really make sense. Um, so if you don't know what those are yet, don't worry, you'll get to it. There's a simple test for when a matrix is singular, a square matrix that is. A matrix is going to be singular if and only if its determinant is 0. So for example, this 3 by 3 matrix has determinant 0. And therefore, we know that there can be no inverse. We don't have to go to any long computation to show that. We just know it by computing the determinant. 